worship this morning as we lift up songs. If you're happy to be in the house of the Lord, let me see you say to your neighbor, I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. I am glad to be in the house of the Lord. We want to lift up songs of praise and worship. Today.
what in the world? The other laborers in your thing, you're declaring the word of the Lord. Say, Lord, he comes.
as the song goes, I just want anybody who wants to give a testimony. As they sing that, we give you praise. Anybody who has a testimony to give, just come up front. You are taking just three testimonies today. So ask, just keep on singing. Anybody who wants to give a testimony, let me go, just come up front, please. Lord, we give. to thank God for his grace that sustains all of us. Our praise and worship told us today that we can, our thanksgiving is like a throne and our praise like a palace for the Lord. So the incendiary AAP, and I can't go into all of it, but this the last couple of week, weeks I've been very unlike myself, very down with so many things, but especially the way it seems our country is going. And I mean, I'm in a private business and it's, it's things seem impossible, just impossible. It's like every day something changes, every day prices go up and it's so erratic. Sometimes you don't know how to manage it. But I want to thank God that his grace still sustains us. Woo. And we have hope because we have God on our side. And even though we look to the left, to the right, the people we thought would save us are not saving us. <laughs> and the people we think will go back to is not going to be any way. It's only God who can sustain us. So I want to thank him for his grace and sustenance. Amen. 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 Any more testimonies? It's a very quick one. I want to thank God for my daughter. She's, she was nine yesterday. She was nine yesterday. Thank God for that. I just want to thank God. I was um, last week Sunday. I wasn't here. I was out of the country for a while on a on a work trip. It was a very stressful work trip. Um, I stayed up to like 50 hours without sleeping, to try and get some stuff done. And I thank God that I haven't broken down, sustain me, and all as well in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, we're going to take the scripture reading. Scripture reading. It's going to come. From, it's coming from. Matthew 11, 2 to 11. Today's theme is Behold Your Promised Redeemer. Behold Your Promised Redeemer. So we're going to read it from Matthew 11, 2 to 11. Let us hear the word of God. When John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you see and hear. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, he just began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in Kansas palaces. Then, what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. 
This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will repair your way before you. I tell you the truth. Among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet, he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. I repeat. I tell you the truth. Among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet, he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. He ends the word of God. We're going to take a carol before the sermon. We're going to project as well. God bless you, merry gentlemen, as we get into the mood of Christmas. Are you ready? Amen. This morning, our hearts are filled with joy as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. Amen. Amen.
We can do it better. 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 God bless you guys. God bless you guys. All the way hands are also paying off. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. Well done. 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 I mean, I'm, I know I'm putting the cart before the horse, but I just want to say that on the 25th of Christmas, which is a Sunday, we're going to have a service here, which will be like a carol service throughout. We're going to have much more of this, and we'll all come together and sing to the Lord. Hallelujah. So you see the announcement come up soon, but then this is just a heads up before it comes up. Hallelujah. It's time for the sermon. We have preached the sermon today. One of our very own a gentleman who likes to be behind the scenes. Actually, literally, he's always behind the scenes. In the control room there. He does his work perfectly well. He doesn't like to be in front. But some ways about today, the Lord allowed him to respond and, 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 and agree to come and preach to us. Can we kindly put our hands together for the man of God today? Mr. Robert Akwe, as he comes to preach to us this morning. Behold your promise, preserved. Good morning, church. As, as Nanayao said, I normally like to be at the back in the control booth. But uh, Uncle Kofi, uh, Reverend Ankama, managed to dig me out of there and bring me here this morning. We are definitely not in normal times. <laughs> My um, the theme for this morning is Behold. The, your promised Messiah. Behold your promised Messiah. And I, th I think a good place to start will be to understand who the Messiah is. Who the Messiah is. The, the, New Te the Old Testament um, Hebrew word for Messiah is Meshayak. Okay, and it means anointed one or chosen one. But it, it's interesting that um, it, it occurs in the Old Testament 39 times. And out of those 39 times, 37 of those times uh, don't, don't um, have nothing to say about you know, a specific person. It's more to do with an anointing that, that comes on a prophet, priest, or king. So you have in instances where it talks in Numbers 3.3 uh, 3 of the anointing of um, Aaron's sons. Or, um, for example, as, as a king, you have... Um, it's talking about the anointing of King, King Saul or, um, or um, a prophet like Elisha. So it, it really, in those 39 instances, didn't, didn't say anything about a specific person. But it's curious to know that in two of those instances, where in Daniel uh, 2, 9, 25, and 26, it was talking specifically about the, uh, the anointed person, the anointed one. Um, and these are only two instances in the Old Testament. Um, when we come to the New Testament, uh, a similar word used, and the Greek word for Messiah is Messiahs. But in, in this instance, it also refers to the anointed one. And you have in John 1, 41, where um, Andrew, for example, had seen, had seen Christ. I was going back to report to Peter about this, and this, this is basically what he said, I have found the Messiah, and the word uses the same, the anointed one, it goes further, the writer goes further to say that I have found the Christ, so we are in no doubt, uh, we, we no doubt know who the Messiah was referring to we also happen to be in the season of Advent, and Advent is the arrival of a notable person, so that's how I decided to structure um, our, our discussion, our study for today. So we are looking at the Messiah who came. So that's the first coming, if you want to put it that way. And the Messiah who is to come. And, uh, or second coming, or second advent, if, if you'd want to put it um, in, that, in that sense. So let, let's go right into the Messiah who came. And I think a good place to start will be from the Old Testament to understand what the promise was. If, if we go back to our, um, the, the theme for today is the promised Messiah. So it would be good to understand what the promise was. And um, in Genesis uh, 3.15, 
I read. And of course, we know what happened in Genesis, the, the fall. After man, uh, God created heaven and earth, the, the fall. And, and this is what God said in 3.15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Initially, this looks like just a statement or a mundane one, but it's actually very prophetic. And by this uh, prophecy, God was promising salvation or the coming of, of Jesus Christ. So in the, in the Old Testament, you see lots of examples like, like this. Um, a, again, you, you'd find in, uh, for example, Deuteron Deuteronomy 18.15, where uh, Moses, who was a prophet, was speaking to the Israelites and was telling them, so there's another who is going to come um, like me, like a prophet, and he's also going to be an anointed one. So the Old Testament is filled with examples of this. Um, God um, pointing to someone coming who was going to be like him. And this culminates in the final arrival of um, the Messiah in Genesis. I mean, in um, the New Testament. That's Matthew 1.18. So, um, by, by this slide, I just, I just uh, did a quick search, and I'm sure for further study we could do that as well, um, to, to find out which prophecies were, were, were fulfilled by Jesus Christ. And it's, it's interesting to know that over 300 prophecies were fulfilled in Jesus' coming over 300 of those. I've, I've tried to summarize a few. Of course, I couldn't cover all of that in the slide, but for example, in, in Micah 5 2, it talks about the fact that Jesus was going to be born in Bethlehem, and this was fulfilled exactly the way it was said in the New Testament. You also find an example of uh, in Numbers 9 12, where it talks about the fact that uh, Jesus' bones were, were not going to be broken during his um, crucifixion, and it's fulfilled exactly that way in the New Testament. Now, we know who the Messiah is, but what was his purpose? What was his purpose here on earth? For the typical Jew in Jesus' day, they were expecting um, a political uh, redeemer, a political Messiah, um, because they were under oppression from the Romans. So, but in, if, if you realize in, in the New Testament, Jesus was always trying to avoid being made king, which as you find in Luke 6, 15, for example, they, they, they were trying to make him king. Or um, in, in one instance, they, they wanted him to comment on um, the taxes of uh, um, Caesar. And he clearly didn't, didn't get into that debate. But one, one thing they lost sight of was, the, the, was his key mission, which is in Isaiah 61, with, with, which he, he quotes us, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on, is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and proclaim freedom for the captives. They missed all of this, I would say, but we're rather focusing on relief from oppression and all those things. And I've mentioned earlier about anointing referring in the Old Testament in those 37 instances, referring to the anointing of a king, priest, or prophet. And you'd realize that Jesus fulfilled all of this to the letter. For example, as prophet, Jesus was the embodiment of the word of God. Um, that's in John 1.1. 1, 1. As priest, Jesus was our ultimate sacrifice. Okay, and he was and as king, he's, he's a ruler over all creation, as, as we know. Okay, so moving on, um, I want to talk a bit about the, our, our reading today um, from John. And yes, I know we've, we've heard it so many times. And we know, we know who John is, John the Baptist. John literally saw the Holy Spirit descend on Jesus Christ. John audibly heard um, God declare that Jesus was um, his son. So it's interesting uh, from the reading that John, whilst in prison, will then again send disciples to go and ask 
if Jesus was truly the Messiah. I don't know how else to describe it, but to say John had a little doubt in his mind. And yes, um, a few commentators have said that, well, maybe he was doing it for the purpose of his disciples rather for himself. But however you look at it, John had a slight, you know, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't sure, he, he wanted to be sure um, well, he wanted to be sure what, what was happening, especially because things weren't, weren't occurring the way he, he probably had imagined it in his mind. So I think that um, that would take us nicely to our next bit. But for me, uh, the question here is that the evidence was right before, and I, I'm just picking on John as an example, but the evidence was right before their eyes, all of them. They, they had the prophecies about the coming Messiah, what he was coming to do, when he was coming, to, uh, when he was coming on earth and everything. But I, I'll say they, they almost missed, missed it, okay? And I, I feel we might be doing the same. We might be doing the same. So that, that would dovetail us nicely to our second bit, which is the, about the second coming, the second advent, or the Messiah who is to come. And again, I'm juxtaposing this with our, our first, my first submission, talking about the promise. In the same way God promised a Messiah um, in the Old Testament, coming into the New Testament, he has promises about Jesus coming again. He has promises about Jesus coming again. And this is littered in the whole of the New Testament, which um, Jesus said himself in some of the instances. For example, in Revelations 1 7, he talks about the fact that I am coming quickly and my reward is with me. In Acts 1 11, um, when he was ascending, you have the angel saying that, you know, the same way you see Jesus Christ go up, that's the same way you see him come down from the clouds. Then I read from John 14 2 to 3. He says, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, you may be also. That where I am, you may be also. So that's the promise we have of his coming. I tried in this next slide to look at the differences between the first and second coming. And of course, um, I couldn't capture everything, but you would have an example like, um, uh, for, I mean, for his first coming, he came as a newborn baby, but he's coming back as a conquering king. Or the fact that as um, in the first coming, he was killed by his enemies, but he's coming back to destroy his enemies and so on and, and so forth. But what is going to be the purpose of his second coming, which I think is, well, what, what we should focus on a lot more. Why, why is he coming back? To rule, yes, but also to judge. But also to judge. And judgment for all of us, Christians, the saved and unsaved alike. Um, and and it, it, doesn't, it doesn't discriminate. Um, if you read Revelation 20, 12, it, it says that, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God and the books were open and another book was open which was the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works so everyone is going to be judged Christian and non-Christian alike well you can say for Christians we're going to be judged for our works but it's judgment nonetheless so what are we doing in this kingdom I move on to um, signs of his return and again when we look at the Old Testament he, he gave them signs of his coming the first time we have similar things which he has said to us and Matthew captures this beautifully in Matthew 24 the, actually the whole of Matthew 24 but I'm focusing on 6 to 8 so it mentions um, it mentions conflicts signs of his coming. It mentions conflicts. It mentions that there are going to be earthquakes. It mentions the fact that there will be famines. It mentions the fact that there will be plagues. 
mentions um, a whole list of things, celestial signs and others. And we might think these things are, are very far away from us, but um, a quick search on the internet would, would prove otherwise. Okay, so currently there are, in the past year, there have been six major wars, okay? And by major, they are looking at wars that um, have had deaths over 10,000. So there have been six major wars in the past year alone. There have been 16 um, wars, um, minor, I mean, compared to the major ones. And these are um, um, wars that have had deaths between 1,000 and 999. There have been 21 minor conflicts. There have been 18 skirmishes and um, clashes. Then when, when you go to earthquakes, which is also stated in Matthew 24. It's, um, and this information from the U.S. National Earthquake Information Center, it talks about the fact that in the past year alone, there have been over 20,000 sighted earthquakes. And yes, our mind quickly goes to the earthquakes we hear about. There have been 16 major ones. And by major, it's, it's talking about earthquakes that have a magnitude of more than eight or more than seven. So there have been 16 of those. Um, then we go to, to famines. Now, the WHO says that over 9 million people die of hunger every year. So, I mean, if we're doing a checklist of um, what Jesus said concerning the signs that show that he's coming back, everything just checks the box. Everything checks the box. All these things are happening. Um, I don't need to go into plagues because we have a very recent example in COVID and we, we all have our masks on as evidence of that. Then um, it goes on to celestial signs and wonders. And they mention something interesting, sun as black as hair. Again, it might seem like something out of this world, but that's a, a solar eclipse, a total solar eclipse. And there are recent sightings of this in December 2020, in uh, December 2020 and 2021. Ghana even has its recent example in 2006, where we had our own solar eclipse. It talks also about the moon being as red as blood. So this also looks like or sounds like something from a, a sci-fi movie, but this is actually as close to us as we can imagine. So th this, this is simply a total lunar eclipse. And uh, there are also sightings of this in recent times. As recent as November 8th, there have been lunar eclipse. And if, if you've been observant, I think that the sun has taken an unusual shade in the past few days. If you've noticed, taking a reddish color, could that be a sign? So a lot of these things, it mentions disturbances in the sea, fear and anxiety of natural disasters, as pouring of the Holy Spirit, etc etc so the uh, brothers and sisters the signs are right before us um, we we don't need to look far his coming is imminent and he jesus says something about his coming in scripture he says it's going to be a surprise to all of us it's going to be a surprise to all of us um, the scripture talks about the fact that um, i'm going to come he's going to come like a thief in the night or he's coming at a time when we do not know. Um, but he, he's again told us that he's, he's giving us signs, but he's coming at, so when we really, we really should be on our guard, we should be on our guard, the time is imminent. I read from um, Luke 21, 29 to 32, concerning the timing of his return, it says, he told them this parable, look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that the summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until these things, these things have happened. So I, I close on this note. I know um, we're expecting uh, a more flowery Christmas message about Jesus' coming. But I think 
it's also a time for us to reflect. Yes, he's come. We are supposed to be excited about his coming, about Christmas. But I think Christmas is also a time for us to reflect on the second advent, that he's promised that he's coming again. Um, they, like I, like I mentioned earlier, they missed, they almost missed it the first time, and we, we should not be in that same position. I, I close with this scripture in Luke 24, and and it's because of what we've discussed today that we've stirred something in us to go back and reflect on. So Luke 24, um, 32. They asked each other, "Were our hearts not burning within us?" while he talked to us on the road and opened the scripture to us. Were our hearts not burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scripture to us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that has come to us. We, we are grateful that you reveal these things to us to redeem us. Lord, we pray that we reflect on these things, oh, oh Lord, during this time as we celebrate your, your birth. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you very much, Robert. Shall we close our eyes and have a few minutes of prayer? What if it was going to be coming in the next hour? What if out of the blue, this Christmas, as we are celebrating him, he chooses to come during Christmas? Are you ready? Is it time to start putting your house in order? Is, this, is there thing, Are there things that you have postponed and prolonged until a latter time? You heard the man of God talk to us this morning. No one knows the time he's coming. I want you to just talk to him right now. If you haven't made peace with the Lord, I suggest, I strongly suggest that this is the time to do so. What about thing it is that is holding you back? I strongly suggest that I beseech by the mercy of God to just put it away. in exchange for your soul, nothing. We just talk to the Lord right now in the name of Jesus. Make peace with him. And if you're here and you haven't accepted the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, Jesus has put on the Lord and Savior, I just want to just ask him in the quietness of your heart, Lord, just come. Come into my heart right now so that when you come next time, Lord, I'm going to be going with you in the name of Jesus. Just do that right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Shall we open our eyes right now? It's time for offertory. Let's get ready.
make circumstances situations. You are God alone. And you remain king. And we thank you, Lord my God, that we that we, 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 we that, that you are able to ask me about above that we can think of ask for imagine. Maybe as we brought to you tokens of our love and affection to you, Lord, we pray that, Lord my God, that you bless it. That you must like all unto us in the name of Jesus Christ and that's Lord my God. From the midst of all that's happening, Lord, may we live in Goshen. May we thrive in Goshen, Lord. May things work out for our good, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ and Lord my God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Your precious name. Hallelujah. Can you please take your seats, please? Can you please take your seats? Announcements. Before they even get kick-started with the announcement video, I just want to say that a number of us have, been, have, have expressed hunger and desire for more of the service, more fellowship, more digging into the word. And um, we began a, a Bible study right after contemporary service. And we just want to open it. We have, we've had a bit of a pilot. We just want to open it up to everybody here as well. It's an optional add-on for those who are hungry and thirsty for more. And it takes no longer than 30 minutes each Sunday after service. We just meet in various things. We have various groups and we just we, we get into the Word. And this is also part of the Christian education that the church is doing. It's not like segmented. It's all part of it. The same thing that's happening here in Ridge, it's happening in Man, it's happening in wherever it is like that. Hallelujah. Today we'll be studying the theme, Joy in a Time of Difficulty and Sadness, which is so key, which is so on point. And we are really, really looking forward to seeing as many of you that can make it. Just wait behind at the back and the leaders will get you organized if you want to stay for a bit longer. And maybe from now you can factor it into your Sunday a bit, another 30 minutes after service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Great. Um, and have you seen? Can we get started, please? Announcements. Why the family man? Um, the family man because um, I'm a young uh, parent and uh, uh, we had a wonderful time with the experienced parents who came up during that time um, and they shared their stories, um, how the journey has been and all of that. And for us, my wife and I, we, we learned a lot and most of the things that we learned, uh, we apply them and it's working for us. So that's what for me I'll say that uh, really impacted me. The career month. I, I own a very small business. <laughs> it's growing by God's grace and I need to learn a lot. So the idea of a career month was for me was great because I believe I was gonna learn a lot and indeed I learned a lot. And during that session, the sessions we have with the resource people and all of that was great. And um, it has really benefited me and my company. all of us that and obviously is doing wonderful things in the life of the, the, the people of the church and so if you are not part of an abuse you've not been attending an abuse on, on Wednesdays I just want to encourage you to start coming because it has been a blessing to me and my entire family so I recommend it to you. Hello lovely family have you been attending an abuse? I know I haven't been going as much as I should so I'm here to entreat you as the number one prodigal daughter. Let's do better this coming year. And Abusi has so many wonderful programs and speakers for us. And the times that I have managed to attend, I have been so blessed. Remember, there's no excuse anymore, not traffic, not anything else, because there are in-person and online options. So see you there next year. The time 
time is now. Hallelujah. Amen. I think they've said everything. I don't need to say anything else about it. New Year resolution, and Naviosi. 2023, and Naviosi. Hallelujah. Amen. In person and online. I also want to say that um, if you remember, we used to have, pre-COVID, we used to have the, the, remember the breakfast we used to have after service? At the back there. How many of us want to bring it back? Even if you raise your hand, I'm bringing it back. Yeah, bringing it back. Hallelujah. Please, please clap, clap. Oh, Richard, clap, clap, please. So it's 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 happening. It's happening from um, next week. Next week we are running run the first test, but next week um, Sunday, and because of that, um, we are taking donations as we used to, so we can buy some of the food, the food stuff and elements and stuff like that. So if the tech team could kindly um, project the number, the phone number at the back there, um, so that we could we could we, we could get to it. Probably that's the last thing you project before as we leave. Um, so thank you very much. I just also hold baskets as we exit, so you can put something inside as we exit. Um, two more announcements and we're out. As I already said, it's Christmas Day. We're going to have a fantastic time here. Carol service. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 8.30 a.m. Let's come here in our Christmas best. We'll have the Christmas tree here. Having said Christmas tree, as many as want to help with deco for, 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 for this hall for Christmas, kindly see Sheila. Sheila, please, where are you? Can we see you, please? Can you wave your hand, Sheila? Sheila at the back there. And um, let's assist with getting the deck ready for Christmas. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I also want to say that um, the following persons who have expressed interest in the, in the ARC discipleship program should see Mr. Charles Crabb behind for a brief meeting after the service. Alex and Margaret Amankwa Poku and Efua Brewwache can meet him after service. I'll, let me make this one the very last one today. I'm trying to get the time. Um, Young Adults Fellowship. Oh, it's projected. Fantastic. Young Adults Fellowship, Friday, 16 December, um, 30. The age range, you know. If you are young at heart, please come. That's all. What is the um, Friday, 16 December, 5.30 p.m. here in the basement. It's going to be a, a refreshing time. There's going to be karaoke. There's going to be bring and share. And there'll be childcare available for those who have kids. So please come along and let's just fellowship and enjoy the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Service has come to an end. I just want to thank each and every one of you for coming to today's service. God bless you all. Could we just close our eyes and be upstanding as we end today's service? Lord, we commit ourselves to your hands, Lord. It's crazy out there, Lord. But you said that our lives are hid with you in Christ. Thank you, Lord, my God, that we are surrounded. You surround us, Lord, with your love and your care. Thank you, Lord, my God, that before a thought enters our head, before we say a word, you know it all, Lord. Lord, thank you that the stuff, the path of the righteous are ordered by the Lord, Lord. So even as we leave, Lord, we entrust that you order us, Lord. May your word be a lamp unto our feet this week and the rest of the year and a light unto our path in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord. Lord, may all things work together for our good, Lord, my God. May we thrive in every circumstance. With the Lord, we declare that we will run through a troop. With the Lord, we will leap over whatever walls ahead of us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. With the Lord, we will make it into next year in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah, a thousand might fall out to our right and ten thousand might fall out left hand, but none shall come near our dwelling place in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We, we, Lord my God, right now, we activate the divine insurance cover of the blood of Jesus over our lives, over the lives of our families in Jesus' name, O oh Lord my God. Sustain, preserve, and guide us, Lord my God. In your most precious name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, if I may, the Lord bless us all and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift up the life of his countenance upon us and give us this peace. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us to sustain us. In Jesus' name, amen. Service is over. You can take your seats. The ashes will see us out briefly. Music team, can you finish with us? Hallelujah. Amen.
everybody lift your voice say you are the only one we need of. 